Good evening. Welcome to another episode of How Do I Do That? My name is Rob. I work with Schaefer Trucking and tonight we're going to go over how to scale and adjust your tandems to make you legal so that you can completely understand how to read one of these and do something with the rear end of your truck so you're legal to go around the country. That's on tonight's episode of How Do I Do That? How to adjust your tandems and get your weights right. Next. All right, so what do we got here? We have a cat scale ticket, and the cat scale ticket tells me the four things that I need to know. One is gonna be, what are my steer axle weights? Okay, that's this line right here. And then, what are my drive axles? What are my trailer? And what is my gross? Now that's important because those four numbers all tell you where your tandems need to be the most important and obvious number right out of the get-go is going to be your gross weight that has to be under 80,000 pounds okay so here you go you're looking at this at 76 880 that means I'm under my 80,000 pounds okay now this ticket I'm actually showing you is the reway after a correction so we're gonna go back and show you the original but if you look, I was actually able to get my weights, you know, distributed the way I would like, which is just a tad bit heavier on my drives than I am on my tandems. That's important because I burn fuel, so this number is going to go down, all right? And then your steer axles. So let's get the diagram of the truck up, and we'll go from there. Well, here we go with my stick figure drawing. If you look, I gave you a trailer. I got an invisible truck but I have a steer tire I have tandems I'm sorry drives and I have my tandems okay and under each I've written the maximum allowed for an 80,000 pound load okay 12 34 and 34 now what you need to understand is is the only one that really can be changed is this okay your 12,000 pounds on your steers I know for Crete and Schaefer, our steers are rated for 12.3. But the only way you can get this to be 12.3 is you have to be able to give up 300 pounds from back here or back here to put it up there. So one of these would be 33.7, and then you could take that to 12.3. That's the only exception I'm going to talk about. Um, this is not for split trailer or you know split tandems. This is not for low boys. This is only for a standard box or reefer. Okay, now let's talk about the trailer itself. What we're going to go over is called bridge law. And I could talk the technicalities of it, but we're not going to worry about that. What I'm going to show you now is what you need to know to understand how we calculate where our tandems go. Okay, the first thing you need to know is, is your trailer is 53 feet from the nose box to the back door. However, we're only concerned with starting at foot three. The front three feet does not count, okay? That's 36 inches from the kingpin front. Now, you may be asking yourself, Rob, why is that? Well, that's because on every calculation you do, right, it's kingpin to either the center of the rear axle group, the center of the rear, rear axle, one of those two. So from the kingpin back. So if I need to measure from the kingpin back, I'm not gonna get a tape measure and go from here to there. It would be easier to go from the back and come forward. All right, and we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Let's go to our uh, next stick figure drawing. All right, so now we have our new stick figure trailer up. We have our kingpin, which would be right here. So that's literally where the line starts. And then you go back so now you see a 40 and a 42 why do I have those up there because those two are the most common um, when you have to adjust okay when, when you need to adjust and what I mean by that though is it's either for California the center of the rear axle has to be at the footy foot mark now if your trailer is not marked on here I put this little mark right there. That would be the hinge, okay? The hinge, the lowest hinge on your rear doors. 
take a tape measure. I've got a 25 foot, that's more than enough. And you wanna go from the rear hinge plate this way. If you go 10 feet, that's your 40 foot mark. Cause you gotta remember, you may have a, 40, a 53 foot trailer, but the first three feet don't count because you get from the center of the, or it's from the kingpin to whatever. All right, so we're gonna count from there to there. It's only a 50 foot trailer then. So if you come to the back and come forward 10, that puts you at 40 feet. I have never, ever, ever been wrong by doing that. So you go from this base plate to the front. That's the rear hinge, not the bumper, because I know the law technically says from the furthest point on the back of a trailer. And there will be people that go to a damn bump stock or, you know, whatever else. Go from the plate, right where the hinge is, and go forward. If you go forward 10, that's 40 feet. If you go forward 8, that's 42 feet. Okay? And so on and so forth. Uh, for the states that require 41 feet, obviously go forward 9 feet. Okay? And you, you mark it however, and then you put that mark over the center hub. Don't try to cheat. Especially in California. They are not going to be nice about it. Okay? So, let's take a look at the next part of this, which you need to know. All right, here we are. So, underneath the trailer, right here in the back, right in front of where your tandems are, is gonna be one of two methods. If you have a pull handle style, there's gonna be a pull handle right in front of your tandems. You're gonna pull that handle until it locks out. You'll see the little notch, you pull it out, you lock it in the notch, the springs will pull your locking pins in. You'll see all these holes under your trailer, these are magnified. Normally, they're going to be right up under here where the tandems are at, okay? You're going to pull that handle, locking it to the out position. The pins may not retract right away. Jump in the truck, release the tractor brake, not the trailer. Release the tractor. Let me say that again. Release the tractor, not the trailer. In order to move your trailer, you need to set the trailer brakes. Set your trailer release the tractor and you want it easy pull forward or go back a couple times and you may hear it but you'll feel it when it starts to slide okay now when you slide you got all these holes up under there if you go back and look you'll see them from one hole to the next is approximately 375 pounds i say approximately because that's not always the way it's going to work it depends as you can see from my little diagram of dotted lines on how the trailer is loaded. If you're front loaded and everything's up here at the front, okay, when you move this, you're not gonna move as much weight. If you get a balance load, which means they kind of start at the front, the majority of the weight towards the middle, and then, you know, tail it off towards the end, you should get around 375 pounds per hole when you move it. Now, you may have a load that's all the way to, almost to the doors. I mean, we've gotten them several times where they come almost to the door. You open it up, you couldn't put anything in there, okay? Again, that will adjust or that will help determine how much you're going to move between holes, okay? And if you get a pre-sealed trailer, I mean, Schaefer does a lot of drop and hook now. We get a lot of pre-sealed trailers, all right? Crete, you do predominantly pre-sealed and pick up trailers. So you're not going to see what's back here or how far back it goes or anything like that. So really, you know, you're gonna make that adjustment when you get to the scale, your, your cat scale it is, and make your adjustment, okay? But by rule, a good rule of thumb is 375. So let's take a look and see how we can use that towards our cat scale. All right, so we're looking at my original cat scale ticket for the load I currently have. And what we're looking at is 11.7, 32,320, 32,980, and 77,000 pounds. When I scaled this, there was half a tank of fuel in my truck. Def and reefer fuel doesn't really, eh, I don't really calculate that in, when I'm doing my math. But I'm looking at this and I can tell you already, I'm gonna move it back. Now you ask why. You, If you're gonna move to shift weight, you always move towards the heavier weight. Right now, I'm looking at a 600 pound difference from front to back with a half a tank of fuel. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna move it back one hole 
and doing my math that 375 should bring this up to about uh, 620 695 32 695 here and 32 uh, C three something right here or six something okay so that's the, the basics you got to remember now I picked this up it was um, preloaded and sealed so I don't know what's in you know how far back it goes or anything but using 375 rule, I just need to move it back one and I'll make room. That'll still leave me plenty of room to fill my truck up. Okay, so we made the move. Boom. We get a new cat scale ticket. And what I want to do is I'm going to set this up so we can see both. And you will see. Here's the original 11.7, 11.6. So by moving. Um, a little bit of weight forward right because that's what I wanted to do I moved the, the tandems back to put 360 375 is what I was estimating but I went from 11.7 to 11.6 now you're probably asking yourself well why did it go down if you put weight in the front easy to explain here we go when I move weight up to the front, and I'm putting that weight on my drives, right? You have to remember it's kind of like here's your tandems, drives, and that distance to your steers. When you put weight here, okay, you're going to put down weight on your drives you're actually going to relieve a little bit of the weight off of your steers this is going to go up you're pushing down here and making this the nose come up just a little bit okay so don't freak out if you see your the weight on your steers go down so we went from 11.7 to 11.6 we went from 32.320 to 32,760. 32,760 was our final weight. And 32,320. And 4,4. Four. So I estimated 375. We actually moved 440 pounds from the back to the front just on the, the weight of the drives, okay? So you see where we're at 32, 320, 32, 760 on the reway. So let's look at our tandems. 32, 980, right? And then we ended up with 32, 520. So 32, 980 and 32, 520. We moved with both of them now I can tell you from here to here we moved 440 pounds forward from the trailer axle we went 32 980 down 460 pounds so it's a 20 pound difference right it's it's just it's one of those weird things 460 came off the back and 420 went to the front or 440 went to the front and 20 pounds disappeared in the midair. No, I don't know. All right. And then if you look here, you also got to shift in gross weight. 77, 76, 880. Okay. That will, that's going to shift a little bit. You move weights around, everything moves. Nothing stays the same, especially your gross. Your gross will not stay the same. You can weigh it four or five different times. I could even go up there after I reweighed, not move anything and reweigh again. And the chances are I will get a different gross weight. Okay, it won't be much more than that. So, how accurate is it? Well, we went to a, a weigh station where I could see my weight. And I got 11,960, right? Is what the thing was telling me my steers were, which that's off by 360 pounds. 
33.1, which I had 32.760, again, 300 pounds, and 32.460, which is only off 100 pounds. Now, these are DOT weights that I got off the scale at DOT. Now, here's the thing. Had cat scale been wrong, if I did everything wrong and cat scale, you know, said I was right, and I went through a, cat, a way station and I was wrong, cat scale will take care of it, all right? They're either going to pay the fine or they'll send a lawyer to court and help you out, all right? That's just the way it is. You can submit everything. With Crete and Schaefer, that's why you get that message after you send your loaded call in about going to the nearest cat scale and weighing your load to make sure that you're legal before you get on the road. This this one right here is my legal weight. That that is legally what I had going down the road. Okay? But that's you know the rule right there. That's how we handle it. So so let's talk about this, okay? Let, let's just kind of wrap your it's a lot to wrap your head around if you're not used to it, okay? I can almost do this in my sleep now. I've done it so many times. And I I will caution everybody. If you're new, cat scale every load. Every load. That thing says it weighs 15,000 pounds. Cat scale it. Learn to move your tandems and get your weights where you want them, okay? And remember, when you're trying to do this, you want to get that, that cat scale so that your drives and your tandems are pretty close to each other. If you can get a little heavier on your drives, that's fine. You know, if you're 33 6 or whatever that with a full tank of fuel, don't mess with it. You you don't want to get too close to the 34 unless you have to. But remember, the cat scale, if you do it right, the cat scale is going to protect you. Always have a certified cat scale, okay? So, in conclusion, well not in conclusion, because I actually have a good bit of information here to give you guys um on the reading part of this okay i told you we have two kinds of of releases for the pins on the trailers all right at least on the shaver side i think creed has them not sure one is you got the pull handle you go back you pull the handle you lock it down you can shift where you need to put weight and then you pull it up and release it and move the trailer to get to the exact hole you need to be in if you have questions about that ask somebody for help better to ask somebody for help than to be just out there lightly just lost okay the other method uses air release okay there's where there would be a handle you'll see a little button a little pull button you got to pull it out the rule for that if your trailer brakes are released pushed in you won't be able to pull that button you can try all day you'll give yourself a hernia long before you ever move them pins set your brakes on the trailer just your trailer brakes set the trailer brake go back pull the pin go back in the truck release the tractor only if you release the trailer the pins go back out so don't do it set your tractor set your trailer go back pull the pin get back in the tractor release the tractor brakes Move the tractor and the load where you need it to. Verify it's where you want it. Hit the brake to release the trailer. And the pins will automatically go back out for you. Do that final slide to get into the hole you need. Verify it and rescale. Always rescale your load. If you're not sure, rescale your load. Would rather be safe than sorry. If you do it three times, that's only $9. That's nine dollars. That's nine dollars of insurance. Okay, that will keep you from getting in trouble. Scale, rescale as needed. Okay, that's not a big deal. I actually went through and got all the information for kingpin laws. There are a few that you really need to know. California is the biggest one. When you go to California, it's so big deal that. With Crete and Schaefer, if you're going to California, it's going to tell you that you're going to California and that you need to make sure you're at the 40-foot mark. This is, here you go, ready? Schaefer Rob's rule on California and loads. When you pick up a load and you scale it, you put it at the 40-foot mark to the center of the rear axle, not the rear axle group. Don't put it between both. 
It goes dead center of the rear axle. And then you scale that load. If you're legal, roll. Don't move them no matter what. Because you get to Arizona. You get to Utah. You get to, you know, Oregon. And you forget to put it back to 40. And you cross in the, and they're going to have a way station waiting for you. And I can tell you. family member that works there them dudes are trained they got their eyes trained you go in and you're longer than 40 feet past that you know rear axle they're gonna find you don't do it okay save yourself a lot of time and trouble you scale a load going to california put it at the 40 foot center of the rear axle and let it ride if it is legal let it go okay that's how that works now uh, we're going to go briefly over the rest of them. Minnesota, New York, and Wisconsin. 43 feet to the center of the rear axle group. That means you can go to 43 feet to the, right in between the two axles. There's usually a hinge right there. Pivot hinge. Line right up over that, and you're going to be legal every time. Minnesota, New York, Wisconsin. 43 feet center of the rear axle group. Indiana. 43 to the rear axle all right so different rear axle and rear axle group are different okay illinois and maine 45 6 to the rear axle 45 6 to the rear axle i'm going to name these other ones off real slowly florida south carolina north carolina tennessee virginia Vermont, New Jersey, Maryland, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, New Hampshire. Legally, it's 45, I'm sorry, correction, 41 feet to the center of the rear axle group. Now, all this information I'm giving you right now come off documents pulled that were accurate as of November 2020. If anything's changed since then, which it hasn't, these are all very accurate, okay? Now, if I didn't mention a state right there, guess what? Nothing is specified. Put it where it legally needs to be. Put it where it is so that you're, you're scaled, you're not over 34,000 on any one axle, and you're not above 12 on your front. Okay? So, all these other states, I only named 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I gave you 18 states. Those 18 states I gave you are specified. That means the other 30 are not. Now, I know somebody just tried to do math. And 30 and 18 is 48. Hawaii's an island. Don't know nothing about it. Been there. It's expensive. No cows. But I don't know what it, you know, what their actual weights are. And Alaska. Okay. If you go to Alaska, do your homework. Don't expect me to know every damn thing. Jeez. So, 30 states. And as a rule of thumb, I just draw a line. Mississippi. Mississippi River, right? If you go west of the Mississippi River, except for California, put it where you need it to be. If you go east through Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Kentucky. Put it where you need to put it. Here's the rule. Now, if you stuck around this long, you're going to be okay. You have to go with the shortest distance through any state you drive through. So, if you go from Mississippi to Kentucky, right? Neither one of those states say they don't have it. It's put it wherever you need to put it. Make it legal. But Tennessee says that it must be 41 feet to the center of the rear axle group. Or closer can't be any further back so if you pick up that load and you scale it and you can't legally get it at 41 feet it's not legal you have to cross through Tennessee it means you have to be at Tennessee weight all right so I know that was a lot of information it sounds hard it's not okay scale every load practice moving your stuff around 
get it to where it's legal, learn how to open an atlas, and read the bridge law section. You're not reading the bridge law section as far as trying to do the math. You can. I got a buddy of mine, Dave Dixon, knows how to do it. He's smarter than me because that shit looks like astrophysics, and I actually understand astrophysics. Okay? So, no, it's even harder than that to me. The biggest thing is make sure you're legal. Get on, open your atlas, look down through this, the, the graph, okay, and it'll tell you. You know what state you're going through to get from point A to point B. Look at it, go through it by the states and go, okay, this state says 41 feet to the center of the reaction group, da 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 whatever. The only one that's a golden rule is California, 40 foot to the center of the rear axle. If I pick it up in Virginia, guess what? It's going to be 40 foot to the center of the rear axle from Virginia all the way to California. I don't care. I'm safe that way, okay? I hope that helps. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave a comment below. I'll get it and I will respond to it immediately. If you need help, Get a hold of your asset manager and tell them that Schaefer Rob said you can contact me anytime. All right? They'll get a hold of me. They'll get you to get a hold of me. Okay? It's a lot of information, I know. But it's information that after just a short time of doing it, you will find second nature. Okay? My name is Rob. I appreciate it if you subscribe, like, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of when more content comes out, hit the little bell icon, okay? We'll be having a few more things coming out here real shortly, including trip planning and how to do it correctly, all right? There's no reason why you can't do that either. Rubber side down, shiny side up. I love you guys. Thank you very much. Please keep it safe.